Hi! Welcome back to Plant Apocalypse, where we are in the middle of Log Humbug. And this is a review of the 2023 Astro Planner from Chani. This was bought with my own money. I do pay for a monthly subscription to their astrology app, and I highly recommend it if you can afford it. They, they also have like plenty of free stuff on there. Highly recommend. Actually, they have a code for using the premium stuff for free. I can't remember it off hand because those those thingies are not around me. So I'll put it up on the screen for you and in the, the description box so you can like copy and paste. Okay, okay. So this is the Astro Planner. Life is messy. Dude, life is messy. Growth isn't linear. That is extremely true. So we do have a nameplate page with, you know, a, a line here if you want to stick one of your fancy decals with your name on it. And since this is an astrology planner, we have the sun sign, your moon sign, and your rising sign. I am personally a Capricorn sun, Aquarius moon, and Capricorn rising. Thank you very much. I will not be saying my email or phone number. Thank you very much again. So how to use this planner. Um, one thing about the, the Chani art um, it's all like collage art and I really like it. it. It's very, very cute. Oh, look at that. It's right there, that code. Um, Chetty one month, all one word. This offer only works for new non-premium users. So if you already have a premium subscription, it's not going to work for you. So it's not going to work for me, but if you came to this video looking for uh, a review on this planner. Thank you for coming. You have this, this free code. So yeah, okay, how to use this planner. This planner is designed to be your map compass. I'm congested. My nose is very kind of st like stuffy and weird, so I'm, I apologize for that. It's, it's virus time of year. This planner is designed to be your map compass and companion for the year ahead. And because it's filled with rituals, reflections, and self-discovery exercises, it's also like a quest of its own, of which you are the triumphant main character. Here's how to make the most of it. Download the Chani app or pull up your chart on with our online tool at chani.com. Recommended once again. Fill in your birth chart on the next page and get to know your placements. I also read her book, You Are Born For This. We will ask you to refer back to your chart often to understand how, uh, how the key astrological moments like new and full moons are impacting you. So this is actually gonna go really well with my personal planner, which is the Memento Mori Gold Planner. I'm not trying to like plug my products every single video I'm making, but here we go. Use the reference tables and charts on the following pages to familiarize yourself with the signs, houses, and planets. Check the planetary movements laid out each day to prep for upcoming events, plan your year, or reflect on how the transits unfold. Note, if some days are blank, that's because there's nothing major going on. Complete the activity prompts for each significant astrological event to make the most of the latest astrology as it happens. As always, try the exercises that resonate with you, leave the rest. Record any dreams, synchronicities, or tarot pulls that you experience each month in the reflection area provided. Think of it as your space to track recurring themes and messages. We hope this planner provides a trusted guide for you in the coming year. Here's to an abundant 2023. Team Chani. Love it! I'm excited. I'm already excited. I'm already, already excited. And then here's like an ad for the app and that code. Oh my god, it comes with stickers. Who we are. Chani is a queer feminist-led team on a mission to support everyone in living their purpose. We believe that astrology can be a tool for healing and self-awareness, 100%, and hope that it can ultimately help transform us and our world for the better. We start within by prioritizing our team's well-being with a salary floor of $80,000 before benefits, fully covered health, dental, and vision insurance, a 401k with a 5% match, unlimited menstrual leave, gender-based violence, paid and protected leave, five weeks of paid office closure a year, unlimited PTO with a vacation stipend, and a wealth building stipend. We also believe in mutual aid as a practice and give 5% of all of our company's revenue directly to queer, trans, black, indigenous, people of color, and or disabled survivors of gender-based violence dispersed by freefrom.org. This really aligns with my values, so huzzah. Also, they have really cute stickers, so that's nice. Oh my god, there's more stickers. Do you see this? They have a sticker for your birth chart. So you've got like the your sun, moon, rising, your Mercury, Venus. Oh, they're like bingo balls. Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto, Chiron, North Node, South Node, 
uh, I don't remember what that's called, but DC, your midheaven, your Imum Coeli, a heart, Aries, Taurus, Gemini, Cancer, Leo, Virgo, Libra, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, and Pisces. And then we have a few things like set my altar, to do, note to self, vacation, eclipse season, ritual time, rebirth, Samhain blessings, your solar return, which is your birthday, time to journal, charge my crystals, pick a card, good job, don't overbook myself, which I do, I feel like, a lot. <laughs> and then this is the, the thing for your birth chart. So you have birth date, location, and birth time, and it has all of your, your houses here, 1 through 12, and then this is where you would be putting what sign is in each house, and... It says you can customize this chart wheel with the stickers included in the planner or your own art supplies or anything else you desire. You'll be referencing this page throughout the year, so take your time to work through this activity in a way that feels resonant for you. To pull up your birth chart, download the Chani app or visit Chani.com. So my chart breakdown. Once you've completed your birth chart, fill in the following. There are cheat sheets on the next pages to help you. My rising sign is... Therefore, my traditional chart ruler is, I have blank planets or points in fire signs, I have blank planets or points in earth signs, I have blank planets or points in air signs, water signs, and then my dominant element is, so for me, like offhand, I don't know, um, but my rising sign is Capricorn, and so my traditional chart ruler is Saturn. So Astro 101, which is nice, they, they give you the planets um, with the meaning in, in astrology with some keywords. If you wanted me to read them, I can do so. You have the, your, your sun is your identity and where you shine. Keywords are confidence, creativity, and vitality. The moon is your body and emotions. Keywords are nurturance, basic needs, and intuition. Mercury, how and where you communicate, and that covers exchanges, communications, and writing. Venus, how and where you connect, covers love, pleasure, and beauty. Mars is how and where you take action. Directness, confrontation, and drive. Jupiter is how and where you create abundance, luck, generosity, and wisdom. Saturn, how and where you create boundaries, discipline, rigidity, and realism. And Saturn's going to be playing a big part in my year next year, so that's a different video. Chiron, how and where you find healing. Healing, wisdom, and mentorship. Uranus, how and where you innovate and disrupt. Radical, volatile, and avant-garde. Neptune, how and where you use your imagination. Dreams, illusion, and idealism. Pluto, how and where you hold secret power. Wealth, power, and mystery. And then we have the points and nodes. Your ascendant is your motivation for living life. Self, body, and vitality are the keywords. Your midheaven is your public image and vocation. So the keywords are career, reputation, and public roles. Your imam Coeli is your ancestry and home, your roots, family, foundations. Your descendant, oh, of course. <laughs> DC, Descendant, is your committed relationships, so love, partnership, and collaboration. Your North Node is how and where you're insatiable, your ambition, hunger, and extremes. South Node, how and where you learn to let go, purification, catharsis, release. My South Node is in Capricorn, where my son is, so I'll, you know, explain that to me, please. We're going through the signs. We have sign, style, Modality and element and traditional ruler. Aries, independent and action oriented. Cardinal fire, Mars. Taurus, stabilizing and grounded. Fixed earth, Venus. Gemini, curious and conversational. Mutable air, Mercury. Cancer, caring and emotive. Cardinal water, moon. Leo, expressive and entertaining. Fixed fire, sun. Virgo, perfecting and analytical. Mutable earth, Mercury. Libra, accommodating and justice-oriented, cardinal air, Venus. Scorpio, mysterious and piercing, fixed water, Mars. Sagittarius, buoyant and positive, mutable fire, Jupiter. Capricorn, disciplined and self-restricting, cardinal earth, Saturn. Um, also, th this is but like the traditional rulers, just to put that out there because I know some people who are into astrology are going to be like, doesn't Uranus rule Aquarius? Um, and yes, but that's like not how it was originally because 
the astronomers back in the day didn't actually see past Saturn, so yeah. Aquarius, intellectual and definitive, fixed air, Saturn. Pisces, and same thing for Pisces, because, you know, Pisces is now ruled by Neptune, but again, um, astronomers, like ancient astronomers, couldn't see past Saturn, so there you go. Pisces, sensitive and creative, mutable water, Jupiter. So they're like dual rulership, but Chani uses the traditional rulers. There you go. So then she's got a chart for the houses, which is super nice. So your first house is your self, appearance, vitality, and life force. Your second house is your assets, resources, and self-worth. Your third house is your communication, daily rituals, siblings, and extended family. Your fourth house is your parents, caregivers, foundations, and home. And of course, these are related to the zodiac signs that rule the houses, starting with Aries, which is the, the baby of the zodiac, um, going all the way to Pisces in the 12th house. So yeah, you can loosely associate those. The fifth house is the house of pleasure, romance, creative energy, and children. The sixth house is work, health, and pets. Seventh house is your house of committed partnerships. Your eighth house is the house of death, mental health, and other people's resources. So um, you, your second and eighth houses are both dealing with money. And I feel like there's more than one love house. Maybe it's seven and five. I don't remember. Anyway, um, travel, education, publishing, religion, astrology, and philosophy are the ninth house themes. For the tenth house, your career and public roles. So that's like your midheaven. Personally, my midheaven is in the eleventh house. So I, I guess there's some wiggle room. It doesn't have to be in the tenth house. But I, I think for, for most people, your midheaven is in because it's, I don't, know, I don't know, community, friends, and good fortune is the 11th house, and then sorrow, loss, daemon, and hidden life is your 12th house. In the year 2023, I call in blank. So then we get into the actual planner part, and you see you got moon phases every day, so that's nice. We have some holidays printed, and, you know, the, the astrological seasons are printed on... Uh, on here with a big icon. You're given an affirmation. Um, there's not a whole lot of room for like note taking like because the sidebar is all... Um, all of the dates are based on Pacific time just so you realize that. So if you have retrograde ending or full moons like all of these are going to be based in Pacific time. So just make sure that you check when this is happening for your own time zone. For example, I'm in the eastern time zone. And then this is your your spread. So it's you don't get a whole week at a time. You get three days. And well, oh, and four days. So I, interesting. Okay, well, let's let's take it page by page by page. So you have your date, obviously, you got the moon phase. Last night I dreamt and my intention for the day. So really this is this is very much like set up like a journal. Kwanzaa ends, New Year's Day, Mer Mercury sextiles Neptune at 10.44 p.m. Pacific time. Your dreams are messengers. Listen closely for the secrets they have to share with you now. So that's pretty exciting that they have like little things happening every day. And again, if there's nothing listed in that day, then there's nothing super exciting happening. So that's cool. We are already start off with New Year reflections. Uh, it's time to release the old and welcome in the new. I think 2022 four, boop, from 2022 I release, and for 2023 I call in. And then we keep going. We have some full moon reflections, so that's nice. You have that already built in if that is something that you are looking to keep track of. So it says, full moons represent culminations. They correspond to peaks, revelations, and heightened activity or feelings. So uh, open your birth chart in the Chani app or flip to the chart wheel you personalized at the front of this planner and then answer the prompts below. Cancer occupies my blank house. The areas of life that this house represents are blah, 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 blah. Um, because, so I, I'm assuming it's because this is a full moon in Cancer. So wherever that full moon in Cancer is hitting your chart, it's going to bring bring up different themes. Um, so with the full moon occurring in this part of your chart, what is being illuminated, magnified, or optimized? Looking back at the past six months, 
How have you grown in this area of your life? I like this. So we have a Mercury Kazemi over here. So I guess if there's like something big, astrologically speaking, um, it takes the place of one of the, the day entries because otherwise it would be just four days. So that's, that's kind of nice. Like your Aquarius season begins, pause and check in with your, yourself. How are you? What does your body need? Consider this your space to vent, dream, or sort through your feelings. Ooh, I'm going to use this as my like tarot journal. And then we get like, let's just, ooh, yeah, let's do that. End of the month reflections. Go back over the synchronicities, dreams, tarot pulls, and or magic moments you encountered this month. Do you notice any common themes, moods, or symbols? It's time to connect the dots. That's nice. And you also get another pause to check in here at the end of February when, you know, there's just like an extra space. So why not use that to check in with yourself? That's nice. You also get uh, new moon intentions here. So this is in February. Pisces occupies my blank house. The areas of life that this house represents are blah, blah, blah. With the new moon occurring in this part of your chart, what do you want to begin or initiate? Under this lunation, what intentions do you want to set for this area of your life? This is going to work so well with my planner. I, I'm just so excited. I'm not trying to like shill my stuff, but mm, okay. Yeah, the Memento Mori Gold Planner will be linked down below just because this is my channel. I do what I want. Um, but yeah, so that, that seems like the whole planner just, you know, repeats with like, you know, the, the quad layout here and with things marked and with space for reflections and, you know, reflections on the astrology and full moon stuff. And then at the end of, what is this? November. Girl, you get two pages. You get two pages to reflect or journal or whatever. And then December comes. That's my birthday. And let's see what they do for the end of the year. You just get an extra page. Okay. Do your best and then rest. Love that. Printed in Los Angeles and made with care. This planner is comprised of FSC certified recycled paper and a mixture of soy and vegetable based inks with reduced amounts of VOC. It's also fully recyclable, including the stickers and spiral. Damn, girl. So you can dispose of it responsibly when you're done. Plus, it was packed and shipped by survivors of gender based violence making a living wage for their labor via gifted by Free From. That's amazing. I love this. I am just so pleased. Okay, we're going to do a pen test. Stop being pleased for like two seconds, please. <laughs> All right. So we have a ballpoint pen, a mild liner, a zig clean color dot pen, a fountain pen. I, I can almost tell you that this is probably not going to be fountain pen friendly. Um, I cannot tell like what pound paper, what poundage this is. But we have a Tombow dual brush pen, we have a um, Pitt Artist pen fine liner, and we have a Uniball Signo gel pen. So that's that's what we're doing. Ready? So with the highlighter here, um, I made sure to overlap the lines. And same with the dual brush pen, the clean color dot. I did a, a light press and like a heavy press because these things are kind of juicy. I'm just checking. There's some light feathering on the fountain pen. Um, so I, yeah, I don't think that people are looking to use fountain pens in here. So here it is. And also the, the coil is nice and thick and yeah, I like it. You're not going to want to use fountain pen. Um, we, we do have some, some bleed through on that. And also where I stopped the highlighter, there's some bleed through there. Surprisingly, the, the heavy press on the clean color dot did not bleed through. You know what? I'm going to test, a a stamp because if I'm going to be using this for my tarot journal, I'm going to be using my tarot stamps and I need to see if that's going to bleed through. These tarot stamps I got on eBay. I also just learned that the people I bought them from also have an Etsy shop. So they also have them on Etsy. I will link them down below for anyone curious. They, they were like $44.98 or something like that, but they were money well spent because you get every single Rider Waite Smith card, every single one. And it saves on sticker stuff. I'm gonna use my, my black ink and see if that makes a difference. All right. Um, there was no bleed through, so that's nice. This one is a Versafine pigment ink for fine details. 
And this is just a water-based ink from Stampin' Up that I got off eBay. <laughs> but yeah, the stamps, stamps look like they will hold up. Um, there is some ghosting though, so if, you know, if that bothers you, you know, you can, ghosting means you can see through a little bit on the page. Um, not, but it's not bleeding through. In case you are not familiar with planar terminology and you're just here for like the astrology and that's fine. So all in all, I am impressed. I am excited, super excited to be able to use this for my tarot journal and my tarot spiritual journal kind of thing. So for next year. Um, also, if you have any Erin Condren things, uh, you can use their bookmarks to mark your book. You just press that in there and there you go. Uh, I'm super excited. It's a little bit thick but it's a good size. It is six and a quarter by eight and three quarters. That's without the coil. If you're including the coil, then you're looking at like seven and an eighth wide. So yeah, that's, that's it. If you have any questions about the, the astro planner or, you know, anything at all, whatever, pop them down below and I will get back to you with my best attempt at an answer. Thanks for watching. Okay, bye.